right. So keep on asking questions. I'll try and keep up with them as we go through this webinar. If I feel like I'm kind of falling behind, I'm just gonna kind of stick to what I'm doing and then I'll get to all of your questions afterwards. So sit back, relax, enjoy um, as I plant up some containers. And, and really, I'm gonna do this kind of to try and show you a lot of different things, whether it's a ceramic container, a plastic container, an insert container. Uh, there's so many different things that you can plant in, a hanging basket. Uh, there's so many, so many options. So let's kind of get that out of the way first. Let's talk about some of the things that you can do before I actually start doing them. Um, so this one I just went and grabbed. I wanted to show you this. This is an all white container. There's you can do lots of color schemes, lots of different ideas, a butterfly garden, you can do herbs, vegetables. I'm gonna be doing a uh, small space edible garden uh, for next week in my webinar. So you could plant herbs in a hanging basket. Look at this guy. You know, if mom is a big uh, mojito drinker or even just uh, loves uh, to, to use mint in desserts and different types of things, this is a mint hanging basket. You can hang this up and you can just pick off of it. You know, you can put this out your back window, out your kitchen window, and then she can just open up the window and pick it right off. So, but you can plant up hanging baskets. They're really easy to do. So it's a great thing if you're trying to match it to a container that you've already done. Uh, this one was really cool because I actually planted this up last fall. I used this Dusty Miller. I used this sedge, this variegated sedge back here. And so these two have actually grown throughout the winter. Now I had a cabbage and I think something else, pansies in there. I took those out because they were kind of done um, and I put in some more white flowers. So I turned this container into a white container that wasn't really intended to be that way. I saw it was a white pot. I had the Dusty Miller, I had the uh, sedge in here. And so I said, you know what, let me put more white in there. And so you can upgrade a container that maybe you have that has some plants that are still existing. So you can see I had this Dusty Miller, it's big because it's been in there a while, that's okay. I've got this sedge that is just cascading over the edge, which is awesome. Then I went and I planted a white salvia in here. I know you can't quite see it. You can see that little bloom popping up. Um, and this is going to get taller. So this is actually going to be my centerpiece. And then I've got these gorgeous white petunias and the white diamond frost euphorbia, which you'll see me use later because it is one of my favorites for containers. It's just a great filler. So let's talk about that real quick. Well, let me not get into my spiller thriller filler ingredient list real quick. Uh, I just want to kind of keep giving you ideas. So this is a white. So if you're, you know, mom loves purple, maybe you do a bunch of mixes of purple. A lot of times you'll see that we do contrasting colors. So we'll do a lot of contrasting colors. We'll also look for colors that, me that mix really, really well. So let me kind of give you a little bit of an idea of that and show you a great use of a hanging basket. So here is, let me take my little bird feeder out of here. Here's an awesome hanging basket. This is above and beyond. This is a mix by Proven Winners and you can see all of those different petunias in there. Of course, this is gorgeous, it's huge, it comes in this nice container. So what you can do with hanging baskets is if you don't have a place to hang them, you can actually just drop this on the porch or patio. So I can take this hook off. It's very easy to just snap that off. Um, it's just got little clips on it and you can save it for later, especially if you wanna save this hanging basket for later. But if you, want, if, you're, if you don't have a place to hang a hanging basket, you can put it right on the porch. It's really, really great. But really what I wanna show you here is all the different colors in here. And what this is doing is there's some contrast in here for sure. There's definitely some contrasting colors, but there's also some complementary colors. So we've got this, this petunia, this pink one that I just absolutely love. It goes darker as it gets into the center. So I don't know if you can quite see that, but you see all these pink blooms in here and you can see how dark that center is. And then that dark center pulls out this kind of fuchsia color color. So that is what pulls that in. And then this lighter colored petunia with the stripes on it, it's got some striping on it, pulls in that pink color as well. So they all kind of have similar characteristics. And so what I typically tell people is when looking for complementary colors is look for the small color. So what you would do is the first plant that you pick is typically gonna be your kind of your winner, your thriller sometimes. So the one that you really love. So let's say it's, let's see if I got something around here that I can show you. Here's a great example. I wouldn't use an orchid, but just let's use this orchid as an example. So I look at this orchid and I say, what are the colors that I can barely see? What is a color that I wanna pull out of here? Well, I definitely actually have a little bit of yellow on the inside. So you can't quite see it probably, but there's a little yellow on the inside of this orchid. There's also some white on the edge of this orchid. And then of course there's this really, really dark kind of fuchsia pink on the inside. So there's multiple colors. And then of course, pale pink. 
So there's a lot of colors going on in just one bloom, and I can go and work with those colors to find other things. So if I did a little bit of yellow underneath this, you would actually, actually see that yellow inside the orchid more. So look for the small colors, look for the small, you know, you know, small characteristics in your blooms, and then you can play off of that as you continue to go along. And maybe I'll have some examples of that later too. I'll show you one. It'll be the first one that I do. We'll show you that. Make sure I don't knock this off. All right. So, and then another cool thing that you can do with hanging baskets. Let me take my white container and put it down. I got a lot of stuff around me, so I got a lot to show you. So let me move this white container down. And then what you can also do with hanging baskets, which is really easy, let's say mom or yourself has a container that uh, you don't quite have time to plant up. Maybe you got people coming over, you're trying, you know, mom's coming over this weekend and you're like, I didn't put up anything. Um, you know, it's a great time. It's very, very easy to get a hanging basket and just pop it into a container. So let me show you how you can do that. So I've got this basic container right here, this nice gray colored monotone uh, planter here. It's a nice ceramic pot. Well, I can just put this hanging basket right in there, right? Very, very easy and one and done. And so that's as easy as that. Now, if you feel like it's slipping down a little bit, just add some bricks for risers. So I can just put these bricks in here. And then that way I can put another type of hanging basket in there. Let's see, the smaller one here, smaller pot size, I should say. Then now that can go in here. And look at that, it's just that easy. And then there you go, you planted up a great container. All you gotta do is take the hook off, it snaps right off, it's just got these little hooks in there, you just pull them right off, and then you're ready to roll and you got yourself a great container. So hanging baskets have a lot of different uses. In fact, I'll be doing a webinar on all the different uses that you can use hanging baskets. So lots and lots of uses there, but a really, really good quick fix for Mother's Day if you just wanna come in, pick out a hanging basket that you like, drop it in a planter and you're done. And you can actually take them out of the planter and plant them too. So you can actually take that hanging basket pot off and then put more soil around it so it maybe gets a little bit more longevity. In these hanging baskets, they'll last for probably a good two months before you might need to get a little bit more extra soil in there. Okay, so that gets some of that out of the way. Um, now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna start kind of simple here and just show you, I'm gonna start planting some things up. And then it'll also lead to a lot of different thoughts that I have on different things you can do, whether it's an herb garden, a dish container, lots and lots of different choices. So let's start with the first one that I wanted to do, which is a classic plastic terracotta pot. These look like the real thing. You can use the real thing, you can use anything. But I wanted to show you just a kind of traditional, you know, easy, easy container that you can do very, very simply um, for mom, for yourself, whoever. Uh, so this is just a plastic terracotta pot. Plastic's nice because, and if you wanna know about all the different containers, guess what? I did a webinar on all the different types of containers. The difference between plastic, ceramic, terracotta, you know, cocoa liners, uh, lots and lots of different choices and lots and lots of different uses. The reason that I like plastic is it's lightweight. So if you think you might be moving this container around, then plastic might be a great option. Now I'm gonna first start by filling this up with a little bit of soil, of course. Let's first stop and talk about soil. Soil is the most important thing. This is where these plants are gonna live uh, for their entirety of their life. Now I'm using a lot of annuals today. We might get into, I don't know that I grabbed a lot of perennials, but as you can see like Dusty Miller in that white container, that's an annual, but it makes it through the winter. Um, so you can use perennials, you can use house plants. I'm gonna show a lot of different examples of that, but soil is important because this is where the plant's root system is gonna live the entire time. So we want to use a good quality potting soil. And that's why I love this McDonald potting soil. This is our special blend of potting soil. It's a really, really professional blend. It's very, very easy to use. This is our natural and organic. We also carry an all purpose. All purpose is a little bit of a lighter formula. So if you're using like indoor planters, if you're planting something inside, I typically recommend that one. But natural and organic is a great one for inside herbs, veggies. It's an awesome, awesome potting soil. And potting soils are basically a decomposted bark 
material. So it's basically going to be some hardwood bark in there that has decomposed past the point of being mulch anymore. And you'll find little bits and pieces of bark in there every once in a while. Um, they should be pretty small, but that's what we're used to here is a bark based mix. And that's what ours is. Then they're going to put in a little bit of peat moss, a little bit of perlite, a little bit of vermiculite, um, and then you get a natural organic fertilizer in there as well. So really, really good potting soil, nice and light, shouldn't kind of clump up too much unless it's really, really wet. there definitely use gloves if you want to I think that's a good idea just in case I have not used gloves in many many years uh, but I always wash my hands afterwards nothing is really bad in our potting soil but you just never know so I always recommend using gloves if you want to be safe and then I think for kids it's a great way to get kids in the garden because they love to put on some fun gloves and and, and play with plants all right so let's get back to our container I've got my plastic terracotta pot so it's nice and lightweight, even with the soil in there. Now let's talk about the bottom. A lot of people ask about drainage um, issues that you might have in, on containers. All your pots, especially outdoor pots, need to have holes in the bottom. So this one's got holes in the bottom. I'm not gonna be too, too worried because I know this is a good potting soil about getting blockage. A lot of people will put rocks down there. Maybe you got a broken clay pot that you can smash up into some smaller pieces. You, those are great uses of that and you can do it. But really what I want you to do is really just the, the purpose of doing it is to keep those drain holes from getting blocked in the future. Um, but I, won't, I don't recommend putting a ton of it down there um, because what can sometimes happen is it can trap water down there. Um, so uh, let's see, it looks like we've got... So don't click on that note. So that's a scam. Um, so uh, I don't think... Yeah, so, so don't click on anything. It's a free webinar. Sorry about that. We'll get them out of here as quick as we can. Um, all right. So, um, so the potting soil is going to don't ever use compost. Potting soil is what you want to do. That potting soil is designed for pots. So let's use potting soil. If you want to put something down there to prevent your drain holes from clogging up, that's fine. But I wouldn't put like a bunch of rock down there, um, especially if you don't have good drainage or good drainage holes because it can collect water down there and then water can become kind of gross, kind of like a swamp, and then it gets sucked back up into the root system, up into the soil. Um, so use rock if you need to, to kind of prevent those drain holes from getting filled up but you don't have to do it, so it's not necessary. Most good potting soils shouldn't clog the holes. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do, let's talk about my recipe, is my spillers, thrillers, and fillers. Oh, so that was us, that post was us, sorry. Um, so my recipe is spillers, thrillers, and fillers. So three components, if those three components are used, you'll have a great container. Now you don't have to stick to that, you don't have to be beholden to this, this recipe, you can do any container that you like. But spillers, thrillers, and fillers are kind of my easy way of telling you how to make a great container. So the first thing you want to use is a thriller, and your thriller is going to be upright. And that's typically where I'll start, is I'll say, I really want to start with finding my thriller. It doesn't have to be. In this case, I'm going to use geraniums. So this is my very simple container. I've got bacopa that I'm going to use. And I've got some really pretty red geraniums. So. I said, I want to make a basic container, a very simple, easy container that's quintessential for, um, for the Hampton Roads area and for mom. Mom loves this container. She loves for me to plant it up every year. And so that's what I'm going to do. So this is an easy way to show this recipe as well. Uh, and it's a very, very basic setup. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my thriller, which is my upright plant. And this is just a green spike, just a basic green spike. And we're going to put this in there. Now I want it to be about level. Um, or below level of the edge of the pot. So I want to give myself at least an inch, maybe half an inch at the least, but usually about an inch of lip around the edge. That's going to help me when I water. So it's going to hold the water right around the soil. It's going to allow the water to soak down through. If your soil is at the same level as the edge of your pot, 
then water is going to come spilling over the sides. It's going to be really, really hard to water over time. And I don't also need to compact or push a lot. So I don't need to push all my soil down. I just put my soil in there, level it out, and I'm good to go. So that looks like it's about the right level. Now I am going to loosen up my root system gently. I'm not going to take a knife or anything. I'm just going to loosen it up so that I can flare some of these roots out. If you put it in there straight from the pot and you don't loosen up the root system, then it might still think it's in a pot and it could just sit there and wrap itself. So then what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of extra soil around it. And this is where I should have brought a hand trowel, but I'll use this pot. I love to use little pots too that I'm using just to plant up my container. So I'll put up a little bit more soil in there just to kind of hold that uh, thriller in place. There's my centerpiece. And then I'm just going to go right around with geranium bacopa, geranium bacopa. Now geranium is you know, could be considered a thriller because of its bloom, but really what we're talking about is thrillers are upright, fillers are going to be in this area, and then spillers are going to go over the edge. They could all kind of cross, you know, the lines a little bit. Some could be thrillers, some could be spillers. Um, you know, different plants could have different parts in that uh, ingredient list, but the geranium in this case is going to be the filler. So it's going to kind of cover in this medium area right here. So I've got this really pretty geranium. I'm going to pop this in. And then I'm just going to work my way all the way around. So I got geranium. And then I've got these gorgeous bacopa. Bacopa is a great one with this white bloom. This is a very classic, very traditional container um, with just bacopa, green spike, and the red geranium. Love bacopa. It just blooms all summer long. It's very, very easy. Uh, typically with a container like this, I'll probably pull it into a little bit of shade when we get closer to the summer. Um, so that uh, it can get a little bit of some cool weather, uh, some cooler temperatures. They do find in full sun, these geraniums are calliope geraniums, um, or sorry, they're calliope series, but they are um, a hybridized geranium so they can take the heat a lot better. So as you can see, I've just gone geranium bacopa, geranium bacopa all the way around. And yeah, I'm putting these plants in fairly tight, um, which I think is okay. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, you might space your plants out, which is probably the best thing for the plant, is to have more room to grow. But I also like to think about how long am I actually going to have this container and, and what am I going to, um, you know, how long is this going to last me? So that's kind of a thought that I always have in my head and that's why I tend to put more plants in because by the time it looks so full and nice, it might be September or October and then I miss my whole season of enjoyment with it. So I really like to put a little bit more in there. Now giving it some space to grow is definitely a good thing um, and is perfectly fine. But if you're trying to put on a show, then definitely, you know, I th I'm okay with putting a little bit of extra plant material in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of this bacopa and just kind of work it around so that it's kind of popping in and out kind of all over the place. I like it to kind of look like it's been growing in there for a little while so it kind of works its way into the geranium a little bit. And there you go. Very simple container, very easy, very traditional. This could sit on a little table at mom's house, that could sit on the front porch, could sit on the steps. Really, really nice, small container, lightweight, very easy to grow, um, and really easy to maintain. I mean, if this Bacopa trails too much, I just give it a little clip. When the geranium spike bloom kind of goes, I just take it down and snap it off, deadhead it. And then if this green spike loses any leaves, it'll be the lower ones, and you just reach in there and pull it out. So a really traditional, great looking container. Look at that, super, super easy, super simple. So then all I'll have to do with this one 